Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the elect. And I wanted to deal with Noah, all right, and link him to us, the remnant, in these latter days. Lord willing, we're of that number, all right, so that you can make sense of what you're reading as you read Genesis, the sixth chapter. All right, dealing with the sons of God. All right, because Noah was one of the sons of God. All right, and he was amongst the wicked generation of the sons of God, just as we are amongst the wicked generation of the Israelites. Okay, and we represent Noah in a sense, the remnant, Lord willing, you know, um, we're of that number. But the way we represent Noah is that amongst you know, the wickedness that the sons of God were doing, you know, he was found doing what was right. As the Lord said, you know, when I return, shall I find faith on the earth? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here in Sirach, the 44th chapter. All right. Because there's too many people who take the story of the sons of God and make all of these weirdo bugged out doctrines. All right. Which have nothing to do with the narrative of the Holy Scriptures. OK. And Jake is not happy unless something weird is in there. The simplicity in Hamashiach. All right. It, but it, it, it's not enough for Jake. All right. And when you deal with us as a people, we deal with symbology. We're very parabolic. We even like that in our raps. But here it is when Jake, you know, uh, reads the Bible. See, they get bugged out over wordings. That's why you have to go line upon line, precept upon precept. The whole volume of the book is what you have to go into to understand things like who are the sons of God. And really, it's very simple. All right. So what we're going to do is link Noah to the remnant. And I'm going to be as precise as possible. Now, we're going to start here in the book of Sirach, the 44th chapter. What is what does this book start off with? All right. Sirach. Uh, 44 and 1 call Hello it says let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us okay this is similar to Hebrews the 11th chapter okay where it goes through particular men who did great things who their great acts of faith led to the legacy being forwarded in the earth all right and here in these latter days the remnant have been raised up to continue the legacy of all right, of the sons of God being restored back to their rightful order. Now it says, the Lord have wrought great glory by them, all right, through his great power from the beginning, all right, and it just gives you the characteristics of these men, all right, and it says, all these are were honored in their generations and were the glory of their times. Well, in the latter days, who will be the glory? The prophets would raise up and the remnant would be gathered, okay? Now, as you keep reading, I'm just going to jump to uh, and we till this day, we speak of Noah. We speak of Enoch. All right. We speak of Moses. We speak of Aaron. We speak of of uh, these great men who we read about. OK, so when you go down, it goes to Enoch. OK, and how you can use his story. Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated being an example of repentance to all generations. All right. You can go into Enoch's story and tie it to what you you you're doing now. OK, the fact that the sons of Cain were in the earth. All right. And we know they were a bunch of murderers. Enoch, you know, uh, the Lord said he walked with him and he opened him up. He supped with him. OK, so Enoch was a was a was on fire. He was he was prophesying. He was preaching against things that were going on in the earth. We get an insight of, to, of that uh, in the book of Jude. And then what happened? He was translated. He was beamed up. That's an example of what repentance is going to lead to. So you can take these stories and tie them to what you're doing now. OK, Noah, which means comfort. OK, Noah was found perfect and righteous and the time of raft. All right. The flood. He was taken in exchange for the world. Therefore, he was left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came see that 
he was left as a remnant. All right. Now, the first time you see Noah's name pop up is in Genesis, the fifth chapter. OK, why does his name pop up in Genesis, the fifth chapter? Because when you go up, these are the descendants of Adam. OK, through Seth. All right. And we have various videos going into this. All right. But I want to make a point as you read these names. Notice. All right. Like Enos, we know men begin to call on the name of the Lord during his time. All right. But when you read it, it says they begot sons and daughters. They also. All right. Begot sons and daughters. OK. When you read about, you know, the descendants. All right. Uh, they begot sons and daughters, sons and daughters. So the Bible is focusing on particular men. But keep in mind that there is other men and women around that are of this lineage going back to Adam through Seth. OK, keep that in mind. Now, as you read down this genealogy of the sons of God. All right. You get Enoch, who, who begot Methuselah. Enoch had what uh, uh, sons and daughters. See that? Now, you only know about Methuselah, but Enoch had sons and daughters. Adam himself. We hear about Cain and Abel and Seth. All right. But Adam. All right. Had what? Sons and daughters. In the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years. And he begat sons and daughters. See that? So Adam had other sons and daughters that we just don't know about. We don't have their names. However, the Bible, when you read this genealogy, is focusing on particulars, all right, who, who, who did mighty works amongst this lineage. But these are all the sons of God, all right, the sons and daughters of God, man. But it's really the sons of God, the, 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 like it's mankind is, is man and woman, okay, the sons of God, as it says, male and female created he them, okay, and blessed them. So these are the this is the lineage of Adam through Seth. Now, as you go down. All right. You see Enoch Genesis five and twenty four. Enoch walked with the most high. Does that mean the most high walked hand in hand with Enoch? No. All right. It means he supped with him. The Lord, you know, pretty much was dealing with him on a high level. The Lord is walking with the remnant in these latter days, starting with the servants, the prophets. And he was not for God took him. Then it goes to Methuselah. All right. And then you keep going down. All right. And then Lamech lived 180 years and two years and begot a son and called his name Noah. So you have Lamech, which when you go to Cain's family line, there's a Lamech. But this is a Lamech on the right hand side through Adam's lineage, through Seth. And he had a son named Noah. All right. Now, keep in mind, there's still other descendants, a whole hell of a lot of them. OK, but the Bible is focusing on particular men and what they did. So. He had a son and called his name Noah. This same shall comfort us concerning our work. And what is the work? All right. The, the calling upon the name of the Lord, the, the, the righteous works, ultimately the legacy, the breath of life that was breathed unto Adam, passed down to uh, uh, Abel, who was slew then Seth. And this is the lineage that were to uphold the ways of righteousness. Okay. But there came a time where Jake got wicked as hell. So what is Lamech Noah's father saying? This same shall comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which Yahweh have cursed, meaning ultimately the Lord is getting ready to destroy this place. All right. This man. OK, shall comfort us. And that's what his name means. All right. Noah. All right. Uh, comfort. OK, let's read this in the NLT real quick. OK. Just to see what it says, how, how it's worded. It says Lamech named his son Noah, for he said, may he bring us relief from our work and the painful labor of farming this ground. The Lord have cursed. All right. Taking care of the earth. OK. Uh, attending to the cattle. OK. And forwarding the righteous ways, the priesthood, everything in the way we know that the priesthood. All right. Was forwarded in the earth through Noah is when he got off the boat. What did he What's the first thing he did? He offered up a sacrifice. OK, he separated clean animal from unclean. All right. And he and he offered up a sacrifice showing you that the righteous way was even known back then. 
As a matter of fact, let's get that in Genesis 8 real quick so I can show you what I mean. This is Genesis, the eighth chapter. Okay, the flood subsides. And when you go down, when he got off the boat, Genesis 8 and 20, and Noah built it an altar. All right, what was, what was in the... Uh, what was used to offer up the sacrifices, man? An altar unto Yahweh and took every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. You see? Showing you that the priesthood and everything will be forwarded in the earth through Noah, through Shem, through our facts at. All right? But anyway, Noah, this same shall comfort us concerning our work in the toil of our hands. Okay? Meaning all of the, the great men that did great works and that, you know, died. All right. It's going to be through Noah, through Shem. Okay. Through our, uh, our Faxat, uh, the Eber, Peleg, and so forth, all the way up to Abraham. All right. That th this blessing, this legacy is going to be continued. Okay. So this is the first time we see Noah's name mentioned. It's in Genesis, the fifth chapter. Now, in the very next chapter, keep in mind, okay, there were sons and daughters of all of these men mentioned who also had sons and daughters, and these are the sons of God. So when you get Genesis, the sixth chapter, it goes into the corruption. Now, what these dudes want you to believe is that the Heavenly Father goes from Genesis, the fifth chapter, giving you the legacy, the 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 lineage, the genealogy, and just skips all the way to some angels who fell from the sky who did wickedness. No, this is going into the sins of that chosen seed and how the Lord eventually got fed up with them and flooded the earth. Another thing, when you go to Luke, okay, you see that same legacy. Okay, that goes all the way. You can go up, you start at the bottom. All right, Luke 3 and 38, Adam, all right, uh, 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 Seth, Enos, and it goes to that same uh, 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 Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, okay, uh, 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 Noah, there you go, Shem, okay, nowhere do you see anything mentioned about no bugged out garbage that these men are talking about, so when you deal with what happened here in Genesis the 6th chapter, it goes into this, as we brought out the other day, let's get 2nd Edges, the uh, third chapter really quick this is second edges the third chapter okay let's see here speaking of adam okay verse seven and unto him thou gave us commandment to love thy way just like the law was given to the Israelites, which he transgressed, and immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations. All right, the sons of God in Genesis, the sixth chapter, are just one of those generations of whom came nations, tribes, people, and kindred out of number. And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. They broke the laws, they broke the way. It wasn't written on stone, but remember, the breath of life was breathed into Adam, and he passed that legacy down all right but we had this flesh to deal with so we constantly sin and every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments where are our angels mentioned here who who actually uh, uh came you know snuck down from heaven after being rebelling against the lord no these are people who walked after their own will and did wonderful things mixing in with the heathen taking on their customs and again in the process of time now brought us the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroyed us them and it came to pass in every one of them as death was unto adam so was the flood unto thee so they fell as well nevertheless one of them thou leftest namely noah with his household of who came all righteous men okay and then eventually we start doing wickedness again OK, so when you go here, but even through that, you know, there was always particular men like Shem who were upright, who stuck to the right way, who didn't go off. Who held those traditions, man. OK. 
That's why the scriptures say what? Sim. Let's see if I can find that. It's in Sirach. 49 and 16. Shem and Seth, all right, were great in honor among men, and so was Adam above every living in creation. So these are the sons of God. All right, Noah being of that lineage, okay, who eventually had uh, a Shem, okay, but they all come from Seth through Adam, point blank, period. So when you read here in Genesis, the sixth chapter, just as uh, we see now, we the, the sons of God are doing what? Wickedness. We ain't going to read. We've we done various lessons on it. So what I'm going to do is after the Lord is describing all of the wickedness that men were doing, the sons of God. OK, before we were called the sons of God, I mean, before we were called Israelites, we were called the sons of God. OK, and then eventually at the time of Terah, he had Abraham and through Abraham was everything restored. Who had Isaac, who had Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. It's a beautiful story now. When you read it, verse five, it says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Speaking of men. All right. As he said, men is just flesh. The flesh is what separated us from the Lord. Anyway, verse six, and he repented Yahweh that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. All right. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I've created. Man. This ain't got nothing to do with freaky angels coming down. Both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. He was he was fed up. But here's the point. Just like he's about to destroy Babylon and different this beast system. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You see that? Noah, who's likened unto the remnant, as we read in Sirach 44, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See that? These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. So Genesis, the sixth chapter, is just a generation of the sons of God that were going off. But Noah was found, uh, 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 what, perfect amongst that generation, man. And then you go to the story, you read about the flood. All right. Uh, uh, different, you know, things you can read all of that. But there you go. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation, showing you that the sons of God were speaking of Israelites, ultimately the chosen lineage through Adam, through Seth, who were going off. OK, they, that seed had multiplied. And what did they start doing? Wickedness. They didn't stick to the ways just like we didn't stick to the ways. Now, let's get. Genesis, the. Uh, seventh chapter. Give me one second here. Genesis, the seventh chapter. All right. And the first verse in Yahweh said unto Noah, comfort, <laughs> Noah, OK, our comfort. Come thou and all thy house in the ark for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Let's read this in the NLT. OK, I mean, it should be making sense to you now. As you read that story, these are just my forefathers going off. But there was one whom the Lord used to keep everything going. Genesis 7 and 1, when everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family. For among all the people of the earth, I see I can see that you alone are righteous. Just like the remnant is going to be caught up to that chariot. OK, we see here Noah got to go into the ark and through the flood he and his family and the in the in the remnant of the animals were able to what survive and everything was ever it was started over through him okay so you can read more on that now let's get hebrews the 11 chapter okay hebrews 11 and 7 by faith noah being warned of god of things not as seen yet Okay, and I believe there's a precept. Let's see if that's in Genesis. All right. <laughs> Genesis 6 and 13. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. 
through the sons of God and, you know, all of the nations were going to the same thing we're seeing now. And this is the message we've received as we as we've woken up and going out and prophesying. I will destroy them with the earth. All right. So he's going to flood the earth. OK. Now. Let's read this. Je Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, the, 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 fire, the flood, just like the fire on Babylon, those are things that, that this world don't think will ever happen. Okay? But Noah, being warned of the Most High of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. So let's read this in the NLT. And this is the same thing the remnant are going to do. And this is what we're doing now. Okay. Hebrews 11 and 7. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. We're building the spiritual temple, the tabernacle of David. He obeyed God who warned him about the things that had never happened before. Rain. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world. Okay, the rest of Jake. And he received the righteousness that comes by faith. So he condemned the sons of God, just as we're condemning our, the wicked of our people and the rest of the heathen. Okay. And he received the righteousness that comes with faith and then it, it, it goes to, to Abraham okay but wait till we get all of the writings about Shem about Seth about our facts at about these other great men the Lord just gives us enough through Noah the first five books through uh, 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 Moses Salakius through Moses we have the first five books he gave him enough so that we can have faith and, and through the spirit put things together man so Noah OK, was doing exactly what we're doing. He was prophesying. OK, going in. You know, building the ark, getting you know, ridiculed, being laughed at. He had mockers, he had scoffers, everything. So did uh, uh, Enoch. OK. When you uh, uh, Hebrews 11 and five, another son of God before Noah came. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him for before he was taken up. He was known as the person who pleased God and the remnant. And the Lord is going to raise up dedicated men in the latter days, learn men in the latter days to feed the remnant with understanding. And they're going to come in the stead of Noah building and laboring through all of the ridicule. OK, because when you get Luke the 17th chapter okay speaking of uh you know the the coming of yahawashai he's speaking of his coming okay let's see here luke 17 and 26 all right as it was in the days of noah so shall it be also in the days of the son of man so he's letting you know that before his return is going to be just like the days of Noah. Okay, so if you tie your story to Noah, you see it. Now, if you use bubbleized, you know, a uh, 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 version of the story and his, you know, wicked demonic angels having sex with women and all of that, you 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 won't relate. See. Yahweh himself is saying, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the son of man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given into marriage. Into the days that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came upon them and destroyed them all. So was it was it angels, wicked, rebellious angels eating and drinking, marrying wives? No, it's, it, it was people, human beings, flesh, carried away in sin. In particular, the sons of God, man. The same thing we see now. Look at Jake. Every, everywhere you look up, Jake is involved in some wickedness, man. 
And this is all they want to do is eat, drink. They don't take anything serious, man. Now Jake's starting to mention the, the food shortage, but they think it's a game. They think it's a joke. They don't really understand the severity of what's happening, and that's what we're telling them. Just like Noah was like, look, it's going to rain. They laughed at him. They mocked him. See that? So we're seeing the same behavior that led to the flood, but we're seeing the men of the Lord who have received comfort from on high preaching, laboring, toiling, and it's going to be through that remnant that everything is going to be restored unto righteousness, man. As a matter of fact, let's get that. In Isaiah 1, Isaiah the first chapter, and he's just speaking of what? The rebellion of God's people, man. The rebellion of God's people. However, when you get Verse 9, it says, except Yahweh of hosts has left us a small remnant, a very small remnant, we should have been, all right, as Sodom, and we would have been like unto Gomorrah. We would have been destroyed. Fire, when the fire comes, <laughs> we would be a part of it as well, lest the Lord, all right, had that remnant. And this is why when you get Malachi, the, four, the fourth chapter, that's why when you get Malachi, the fourth chapter, the hearts of the children would have to be turned back to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children unless the Lord came back and what? Smit the earth with a curse. So the remnant had to awaken starting with the preaching of what? Elijah the prophet. Okay? But that would be amongst Jake doing wickedness, mocking us. Okay? So as the days of Noah were, so shall it be in the days of the son of man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given unto marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, when you read the, 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 the story of Noah, it doesn't you don't read about them eating and drinking, but you do read about them being doing wickedness and being and given unto marriage. Through land with the daughters of, of men. Who had different customs. So the Lord, the same thing you see Jake doing now, Jake is all over the place, man. Into every different culture, mocking the prophets, the same thing Noah went through. That's what he was going through. It wasn't no damn angel. Stop with that bugged out book of Enoch breakdowns. It doesn't work and it's not profitable. The Bible gives us more than enough to understand what we what we need to understand before we're brought to that next glory. And then we're going to know everything because there's so much more. It's so much more, man. But the Lord, through the Bible, gave us enough for faith, all right, for the gospel to go out, man. So just like Noah, okay, and at the time that Yahweh Shah returns, you know, through the remnant, he's going to see what? Righteousness, faithfulness, all right? Shall I find faith? What's that, Luke 18? Luke, the 18th chapter. Speaking of this, this woman. Let's see here. Let's get it in it. King James. Luke 18 and 8. I tell you that I will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? <laughs> you see that? Shall he find faith on the earth when he comes back? And that's pretty much the, the spirit Noah was in. Okay. Sirach 44 and, 11, and 17. Noah was found perfect and righteous. And in the time of wrath, he was taken in exchange for the world. Therefore, was he left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came. You see, in the remnant in Isaiah, the 10th chapter. Okay. Isaiah, the 10th chapter, in the 20th verse, 
It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped. Noah escaped. All right. Him, his sons and their wives, they escaped. OK, through Noah's righteousness. Escaped. All right. Uh, uh, of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay on him that smote them, but they shall stay up on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and truth. So we're not going to well, follow the ways of our oppressor anymore. We're going to turn from wickedness. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. And that's the faith. You see? For though my people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet only a remnant shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. So what's going to happen to the rest? <laughs> All right. Destruction. What happened to the rest of, 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 of the sons of God at the time of Noah? OK, the, uh, absolutely flooded, uh, drowned. But bubble eyes tell you. All right. Rahab GOCC tells you there were other demons who survived, which is bugged out. OK, so all Noah. All right. Represented was what we're doing. That's the best way to look at it. Second Peter's two and five. Let's start at four. For if God spared not the angels, the messengers of the most high, the sons of God that sinned, but cast them down to hell. OK, and we know hell in the scriptures just means a, 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 a messed up situation. OK, it doesn't always mean fire. Hell can it mean many things. OK, and we're in hell now. We got to deal with this decrepit flesh. OK, again, the, the heathen ruling over us, as we always bring out Isaiah. Five, one of my favorite. All right. Isaiah chapter five. And 13, therefore, they are gone. My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. See that through. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. All right. What did the Lord do? All right. Job 12 and 24. He taketh away the heart, the mind of the chief people of the earth and calls it them to wonder in the wilderness where there is no way. All right. But through a remnant. All right. We're, we have a way back. All right. The chief people of the earth were cast down. OK. Cast down and, and, and brought into hell. These chains of darkness, man. OK. And delivered them. Second Peter's two and four into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. And we just did a video going into that. If you want more information on that. Verse 5, and spared not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. See, he didn't spare. All right. The sons of God, he, he, he ultimately what he, he judged them. Then he goes into what he did in Sodom and Gomorrah, but deliver a lot. You see. Verse 8, for that righteous man dwelling among them, seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So you when you read about these particular figures, you, you you're supposed to tie them to what you have going on now. All right, let's get to Elder Yatazak's favorite scripture, Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort might have hope. OK, and to bring it all home, Philippians 2 and 15. All right. Let's start at 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. OK, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation or nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. OK. So you 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 want to be blameless and harmless as the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, which is the nation of Israel, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, which that's what Noah did. He shined. OK, he shined. And ultimately. All right. As the scriptures say, <laughs> he was delivered. He was saved. 
Okay, as the scriptures say, as many as believe on him. Okay, as many as believe on him. Let's get that in the book of what's that, John? Goodness gracious, this internet. Give me one second. Goodness gracious. All right. Just gonna get to the point. This is John 1 and 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even them that believed on his name. You see that? So as we're awakening and preaching and warning and prophesying, as many as you that believe on Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, through our preaching, what happened? All right, that's you receiving the Lord and you're becoming one of the sons of God. All right. And you're separating yourself from this perverse and wicked generation. The same thing Peter told them in the book of Acts. OK. Let's see here. In the book of Acts 2. In 40, it says, and as many other words did he testify and exhort, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation, the ones who ultimately rebelled against Yahweh Shai, man. All right. So that's it, man. I just wanted to go through that. Hopefully it made sense and y'all edify. I tried to be as straight to the point as possible. Shalom.